So the automobile. At any point in its 131-year history, the automobile represents the highest expression of the art and engineering talents of mankind. It leverages every invention up the ladder of innovation since the beginning of time, from fire to the wheel to computers to space technology, satellite navigation systems, and even now artificial intelligence. And as smart as our vehicles have become, we're still in charge. So we're responsible for the problems it's created and the ones yet to come. There are, at this time, about one billion vehicles on the planet, and that number is expected to increase to two billion by 2050. In California alone, where I'm from, we put about two million new vehicles on the road every year. That's 170,000 new vehicles per month. And as the population of vehicles has increased, so too is their size. What hasn't changed is their purpose, and that, that's from getting from point A to point B. Mobility is all about getting from point A to point B in the most efficient way and the simplest way possible. How do we drive? Well, 77% of all driving is single pasture. That's one person in the vehicle. 90% of commuting is single passenger. But what is the fastest growing automobile segment in the world right now? It's SUVs. The idea that you have to have six or seven seats in a vehicle to transport one or two people from point A to point B needs to be re-examined. And right now, as much as 33% of the land in major cities is being used for parking cars. And that's not an accident, that's by design. Uh, regulations in the United States and around the world mandate that there is a certain amount of parking space for homes, for factories, for businesses, for transportation networks, airports, train stations. And it's estimated that about 30% of the traffic in cities is used or, or occurs just because people are searching for a parking spot. On average, uh, in New York City, people spend about 20 minutes looking for a parking spot. Some people spend as much as 40 minutes looking for a parking spot. This is a drone photo from Golden Week in China in 2015. And as bad as the traffic problems are in the United States and in the developed world, it's only worse in developing worlds. I mean, I know China. I've, in fact, I'm probably the only person who actually has a Chinese driver's license in this room. <laughs> What's needed is a new understanding of personal mobility. Uh, there's a category of vehicles that's been forgotten in a rush to get to where we are. And that is basically something that combines the energy efficiency of motorcycles, the ease of parking, the operating cost and maneuverability, with the safety, comfort, all-weather operation and driving, needs, uh, driving ease of cars. This idea began in the 1970s. Frank Winchell, uh, working for General Motors, uh, developed the lean machine. It's a narrow vehicle with a small engine that gets up to 150 miles per gallon. It was a prototype. Uh, it was not a successful vehicle simply because we didn't have the technological means to make it a reality. It has an awkward driving control system. It's too small by today's standards. However, now we do have the technology to make this a reality. The advantages of a one-meter class of vehicles are the superior power-to-weight ratio, the lower coefficient of drag, a reduced use of materials, the smaller energy impact, the smaller traffic impact, and the smaller parking impact. This is probably the easiest thing to visualize. Aerodynamically, cars spend about 40% of their energy simply pushing air out of the way. Narrow vehicles are much more aerodynamic, much more fuel efficient, and still provide the same per person seating area that a car provides.
So the standard is one meter wire or less, one to two passengers, drive-by wire steering, electric or hybrid, Euro 6, highway capable speeds, and meets NCAP safety standards. And this is what that vehicle might look like. The amount and the size of vehicles has a big impact on travel time. Add a few more vehicles to the mix, and the amount of time that it takes you to get to your destination increases exponentially. Having narrow vehicles allows us to create these small vehicle commuter lanes, which effectively takes four lanes of traffic and makes them into six lanes of traffic. And once you arrive at your destination, narrow vehicles only take up about half of the parking space of their compact cousins. The next big thing, I was just going to touch on this for a little while, but I think it's important. On-demand aviation. Recent technological advances in batteries, in motors, have allowed this new class of vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Several companies, including two in Germany, are working on this technology. And they're calling these air taxis. This would use small vertiports using existing infrastructure, the tops of buildings, parking lots, highway interchanges to create these vertiports, these landing zones for these vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. Our own solution is creating an autonomous dockable platform, creating a true door-to-door -door situation, a true door-to-door -door solution for these vehicles. These can be also used for emergency vehicles, police, and ambulances. And again, <laughs> I'm sorry, I've completely forgotten my closing. <laughs> Thank you.